Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the yet another episode of Kerigma. On February 22, 2018, Madhu, a 30-year-old tribal man from Attapadi, Kerala, had been attacked by a group of men for stealing some bread and rice from a grocery shop. They tied him with a shawl and beat him up with sticks and took photos of him. After which he was handed over to the local police, Madhu collapsed and died in the police jeep on the way to a government hospital for his first aid treatment. The police charge sheet remarks that there were around 15 injuries on Madhu's body. The police obtained 8 mobile phones used to shoot photos and videos of the lynching from the accused as the evidence. The selected pericope for today's meditation, Luke chapter 4 verses from 16 to 30, is a part of the first Galilean ministry speech of Jesus Christ. The Gospel of Luke is commonly regarded as the Gospel of Poor. The claim of Richard Cassidy reflects a common view and unmistakable features of the Jesus described in the Lucan account is that he displays a specified and consistent concern for the sick and the poor. The Nasrath Manifesto is also deals with the concern of the poor. Among the New Testament writers, it is Luke who keeps a clear faith and ideological bias towards the poor throughout his writings. It is mainly due to the, his socio-political environment there were many reasons behind the pathetic situation in the land, including two famines, 25th AD and AD 46 and 48, and the formation of many protest or renewal groups among the Judaism was a sign of desperation and agitation by the people who were unemployed and exploited by the dominant ones in the society in the name of politics and culture. Keeping this in mind, I would like to entitle my sermon as Transformation Affirms Fullness of Life. According to Cambridge University, transformation is a complete change in the appearance or character of something or someone, especially so that things or person is improved. Transformation is a vision of Jesus Christ. Verse 18 says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. In the passage, Jesus being involved in such an unexpected service, service that people from his own town were not willing to accept. He brings out his commitment to those outside the history, the poor in Luke are to be identified with the destitute and beggars of the society. The Lucan poor are those who are deficient in material possessions but put all their trust in God. The Greek word tokos means poor should be translated by destitute or beggar. It marked a server from of poverty than the other common Greek term pennies and in tears. The Tokoi were on the fringe of Lucan society since they had no place in the economy and for their survival dependent entirely on the hospitality of others. At this scenario, Jesus introduced his mission mandate by reading Isaiah 61, 1 and 2 Jesus not only announced fulfillment of prophecy, but defined what messianic role. 
Isaiah 61 is a servant song and the word anointed me means made me in Christ or Messiah. When understood literally, the passage says that Christ is God's servant who will bring to reality the longing and the hope of the poor, oppressed and imprisoned. The significance of Nazareth Manifesto is Jesus in his first public statement to the mission. Jesus discerns that it is commitment to the poor which is the sign of the anointing of God's spirit. The spirit of the Lord is discerned to be upon Jesus because he has anointed Jesus to walk with those on the margins. It is indeed surprising to understand the Luke and effort to bring forth the Old Testament promises for the people. The Nazareth Manifesto provides a vision for Jesus' ministry because of his variety of composition. It serves needs and aspiration of the marginalized. It is clear in the synoptic picture on Jesus. The vision of Jesus to make God's kingdom as a tangible manifestation of his justice and love for the poor, the suffering and those who live in misery. According to Ernest Trottage, transformation is one of the permanent result of the teachings of Jesus. However, the idea of it is the earthly possessions should be for the use of all people. Though the love of which share and keeps nothing back. Jesus' vision is very much visionable in all the Gospels. The healings and wonders are mainly based on the vision of transformation. The Nazareth Manifesto is the beginning of the vision-oriented transformative act of Jesus. The vision helped Jesus to equip the transformed community. Jesus strongly stands for the transformation of the weak and oppressed because it can bring the justice which is the heart of Jesus' vision. The shepherd and the leaders must pain with the pain of the pain. The shepherd and the leaders must pain with the pain of the pain. God is biased in the favor of transformation of the poor and the exploited. The bias for the victims of weak is something central to the Christian faith. As a called out community, what is our vision that transform the society? Transformation is the heart of Jesus' mission. The Nazareth Manifesto also reveals that transformation as the heart of Jesus' mission. In this transformation, we could see the key role played by justice. We can see in the verse 26 and 27. Here Jesus explained about the incident of widow of Sarafat and Naaman the leper. The Nazareth Manifesto passage also helps us to understand that the commitment to those on the underside of the history is not everybody's preference apart from Jesus. How God privileged the widow of Sarafat in Zidon and Naaman, the Syrian are the crystal clear example of justice in the mission of Jesus. Giving everyone their due is the concept of justice proposed by Jesus Christ. In Nazareth Manifesto, we could see the list of people who are denied justice and urge of Jesus to transform their lives by giving their due. Nazareth Manifesto of Jesus makes justice more complete. Let us consider the idea of justice which emerge in the Manifesto. It is a justice which takes the form of preference. Jesus makes no secret out of the preference for the poor, captive, blind and the oppressed. This understanding of justice of preference is a counter intuitive from the justice that a form transformation is needed in today's system. His notion of justice understood as being in solidarity with those who experience injustice and as taking the side of those who have been marginalized and 
excluded from relationship is required to produce the true opposition to the injustice of the status quo this notion of justice is more radical than more rejections of the status quo notion of justice of fairness because it leads to unexpected reversal implying not only attention to need but closer attention to those pressurized by injustice and reminds us of alternative sorts of agency energy that are often overlooked the nasrit manifesto also makes justice more holistic and complete that it help us to focus more on inspiring the constructions of positives rather than merely focus on removing negatives the focus is on positive and constructive possibilities proclaiming good news to the poor release to the captives recovery of the sight to the blind and letting the oppressed go free it gives us a restorative dimension of justice saint irenaeus of lyon stated in the second century that the glory of god is a human being fully alive the inferior condition of the weak and the humble is felt as an attack on the unity of the people of god our mission should transform the society to a unified community through justice in such a context of nasrit manifesto of jesus offers justice which ensure life in all its fullness for the poor it is it was a shocking news that pope gregory did not offer a holy mass on a particular sunday lot of questions came away to the pope gregory about this issue because in catholic church seen it as a sin but his reply of pope astonished everyone he said a neighbor of mine died last week due to starvation if i am not able to offer food to my neighbor i am not worthy enough to offer a holy mass in the name of jesus christ pop gregory realized that he did not do justice which may transform the poor man lived nearer to him dear friends as we think about the question how can we engage in transformation we draw confidence from the fact that efforts both great and small are important we need to be open to the possibilities that even the smallest of the efforts can act a catalyst for a chain of transformation which will make jesus promise of life in all its fullness more possible today as the churches move forward to a new future the challenges of for us is that our churches may grow stronger in our service to the transforming god to this end may we learn to invest transformation which is the vision of jesus that is the thirst of mission enforce us to the fullness of life in both small and great ways and may god make our efforts the foundations for the building up of god's kingdom the transformative vision and transformative mission for the fullness life to all may god help us to find our life in living the way of christ may god bless you all amen